In the reading, we talked about the difference between cells and batteries. In this video, I want to show you some more details about that and show you some practical things you can do with them. Here is a set of cells. They all contain the same three things. Two metal plates made of different materials and an acid that acts as a chemical pump. These are called dry cells because the acid is not a liquid. It is more like toothpaste. Sometimes, if a cell gets really old or too hot, it will crack and the acid will leak out. It is not good for you. Don't touch it. Do not intentionally open up cells. There's nothing in there you need. The difference between these cells is their size. The bigger cells contain more metal and more acid and therefore can pump more charge before the cell dies. Here's what happens if I try to light a holiday bulb with a double A cell. It is not very bright. If the cell were new, it would be able to keep the light on for about three hours. Now I will light the same bulb with a D cell. I bet many of you thought it would be brighter. Of course it isn't. The D cell and the AA cell, and in fact all cells, are 1.5 volts. The charges falling through the bulb have the same amount of energy, which means the bulbs look the same. The difference is that the D cell can keep the bulb on for about 16 hours. We can combine cells to make batteries. One C cell by itself is 1.5 volts. If I add a second one in series, we get a 3 volt battery. Now it is 4.5 volts. Now it's 6 volts. A single C can separate about 5,000 milliamp hours of charge. Even though I have four cells here, this battery is still only worth 5,000 milliamp hours. Every single electron that moves through this battery uses up acid in every cell as it passes through. Here's an interesting game. I built a battery out of three cells, but two of them are Ds and one of them is a C. You can see that the three cells in the series make about 4.5 volts like it's supposed to, but this battery is still only worth 5,000 milliamp hours. Even though there are two big Ds, the whole battery will stop working as soon as the smaller C runs out of its acid. It's actually a hassle to make batteries out of cells. They roll around too easily. They sell these plastic cases to make it easier. This case is meant to take four Ds and make it into a 6 volt battery. In physics, we often want to be able to make custom batteries. We have a bunch of these little blue cell holders in your toy bins that make it easy to build batteries. The cases have snaps on them that allow you to connect them in series or parallel. Here's a series example. I actually forgot to take a picture of a parallel example. Sorry. These devices are commercial batteries. I'm sure you've all seen this one before. It's a 9 volt battery. All batteries are combinations of cells, even these. I said before that you should never open up a cell, and that is true, but this is a battery. We can open it up. The outside metal shell is just packaging. Since this is a 9 volt battery, it should be made up of 6 cells in series. And as we can see, this battery is made up of a set of 6 quad A's. They are a little bit smaller than the triple A's in your calculators. Here's a cheaper 9 volt battery from the dollar store. This one also has 6 cells, but in this case it is made of loose metal plates separated by damp paper towel soaked in citrus juice. Interesting, and a little yucky. While I've got the 9 volt batteries out, I can show you something else. We can make a battery out of batteries. If I stack these 4 9 volt batteries together, I can get 36 volts. Most of you are probably less familiar with this battery. It's called a lantern battery. It says 6 volts on it. To get to 6 volts, it would have to contain 4 cells in series. And here they are. These are F cells. They are the thickness of a D cell, but about an inch longer. Remember how dim the holiday bulbs were when we lit them with the AA and the D cells? Well, check this out. When I use the 9 volt battery, it is very bright because every charge is dropping off of 9 bleachers instead of 1.5 bleachers. This brightness won't last very long though, only about 90 minutes. Quad A's are very small and don't contain a lot of acid. Oh, we can also light the bulb with the lantern battery. The 6 volts still makes the light very bright, but the huge volume of the F cells means light will be on for almost a whole day. Several years ago, I had an interesting new battery experience. My garage door opener stopped working, so I got up on a ladder and investigated. There was a low battery light on inside the control panel. I took the panel off and saw this. Based on its shape, I thought it was a cell. It looked like a short double A. But then I saw the label. It said 12 volts. It was not a cell. It was a battery. So what did I do? I opened it. Inside was a stack of eight button cells. 1.5 volts times eight is 12 volts. Mostly in this video we've been looking at commercial cells and batteries. 
but you can make cells and batteries out of almost anything. You just need two different metals and some acid. About a decade ago, my brother made his own battery to charge his iPhone. Most people think pennies are made out of copper, but that is not true anymore. The outside of the penny is copper, the inside is zinc. My brother took a pile of 30 pennies and used a Dremel tool to sand the copper off one side of each of them. He then took an apple and sliced it into discs. He made a little stack on his kitchen counter that looked like this. He cut the cord from a spare phone cable and attached each side of the cable to opposite sides of his pile. He was able to keep his phone charged for a whole month using this battery. He could have used it longer, but the apple started rotting.